How's that? Oh, now better. All right. So let me just uh, back up okay. a, a little bit. Thank you for uh, for letting me know. Thanks. So. So just so you can see who we all were, uh, in case you didn't see that um, since I had that pause still, sorry about that. Um, and then I, as I mentioned, the, the various links. Okay. And uh, like I said, this is the, the 51st uh, webinar that we've done. So we've been doing this for just over a year now. Um, these were some of the previous topics uh, that we were uh, had done Okay. And you can access all of the uh, recorded webinars that we've done over the last year uh, on the YouTube channel at the link that you see there below. Uh, so before I go any further, I just want to do a couple of quick polls. And uh, I'll just ask, uh, first of all, I um, want to know uh, if this is the first webinar that you've attended or if you've been to one of these webinars in the past. And it uh, looks like uh, about 20% or so are, are attending for the first time. So welcome to those that haven't been to one of these before. And uh, as we usually do, we have a lot of repeat customers. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time. And hopefully these things have all been uh, very useful for you. So I'll go ahead and uh, close that poll and then uh, just share it so you can see kind of the results. Okay, and let's hide that. And then I also just want to get a quick idea as to which AutoCAD application or which product you're using, using AutoCAD or AutoCAD uh, LT or one of the verticals like architecture or MEP or something completely different that has nothing to do with AutoCAD. And it's looking like 100% uh, are using some flavor of AutoCAD. Oh, nope, I said, spoke too late. We have 1% other. But it uh, looks like the vast majority are using uh, AutoCAD and very tight race for the uh, verticals and for LT. So I'll go ahead and I'll show that real quick. Got almost a dead heat for LT and the verticals. So it's interesting. And uh, let's see. And I guess at that point, let me go ahead and uh, talk just a little bit about the customer council. Um, I know a lot of folks uh, like to, um, you know, kind of give feedback on what's going to be in the product. And the AutoCAD customer council is a great way to provide feedback for future releases of the software. So if you're interested in, in providing uh, feedback to the to the product management team, uh, you want to get yourself involved by emailing one of those two email aliases uh, for either AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, and uh, you can ask to be included in the customer council. Um, so uh, you know, just keep that in mind uh, if you want to influence what's happening in the future here. And we also like to just talk about some of the uh, featured articles in our knowledge network. Um, the, the, one of the, the newest ones here was just released today, I believe, is the uh, AutoCAD uh, 2015 uh, Hatch Intersection Object Snap Hotfix. So that is, um, gives you the ability to use the intersection object snap with the hatch pattern. So if you have a hatch pattern you're using for a ceiling grid or something like that, uh, we had an issue where you were, were not able to snap to the intersections and this fixes that issue, as well as some of the other uh, items here. Also, just so you know, you wanna keep an eye out uh, uh, in the near future, you should be seeing the uh, 2016 service pack coming out for AutoCAD. So that should be happening in the fairly soon. Okay. So this week's agenda, we're going to be talking about attributes. And uh, Scott will get into all of these different things for, for you here in just a moment. Just uh, fill out all these slides. And we'll, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, transition over and change the presenter over to Scott and let him step you through the actual demo. Hello, everyone. Okay, 
So I have this drawing up. I hope everyone can see me. If you can't see my screen, please let me know. This is our attributes uh, modification drawing. And this is basically a small office here. It has a conference room and three offices. So I'll go ahead and start. So what is an attribute? Well, an attribute is a label or tag that attaches data to a block. And uh, attribute can be made into a standalone block, like a label block. And another common use for attributes is in title blocks. And uh, also, data which might be contained in attributes are part numbers, prices, comments, owners' names. Um, there's various things you can add. You can pretty much add anything as an attribute. Attribute data can be extracted to a table or external file. I'm going to cover that in the data extraction portion of this presentation at the end here. So you can um, throw that out into a schedule or a bill of materials. So let's go ahead and get started with the blocks here. Uh, we have a couple of different layers. As you can see, we're going to be working with uh, the blocks down here, these are phones. Zoom in so everyone can see. It's upside down, but you get the idea. There's several of them throughout this office. So there's going to be a couple of commands I'm going to go through here. So first we're going to do uh, a command called uh, attribute edit or ATT edit from the command line. I'm going to type that in. I'm going to select a block reference here, one of the phones. And as you can see, uh, here is a list of all the attributes currently assigned in this block along with their values. So we have extension number, employee name, employee title, department, price of phone. So there are numerous methods for working with existing attributes in AutoCAD. And one of the oldest is this at edit uh, command, although not a default when double clicking on an attribute defined block. So we can go and double click on the block. I don't know if anyone can see this here. So we have the uh, enhanced attribute editor. So it's not quite the same as the uh, regular at edit command here. I'll just cancel that out. It is the default when inserting an attribute defined block, however. So, for example, if we go say insert phone, we'll come up with the edit attributes dialog here. Just cancel that out. I'll get back into that in a second. So let's talk more about this here. So we're going to edit attribute in a single block reference. So let's go ahead and type that command in here. So this displays the edit attributes dialog box. And I'm going to go ahead and change a couple things here. Let's change the extension to One, two, three, four, and let's say this is a more expensive phone. It will be $99.95. Then we can check on that again, and that should be retained. Also, if you select the properties, it should show up as well. So you see uh, the extension is different than before. The cost is different than before everything updated in the properties. So um, let's see here. Go X out of this. And you can change those properties within uh, the properties palette as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just recreate that uh, block I did a second ago here. 
So we're going to edit uh, the phone block. We can create one of those. Let's say this person is just really busy and they have multiple phones. So we're going to uh, edit some of these attributes here. And we're going to say, let's give it an extension. Give him the name. His department. And the price. Properties, make sure he's on the correct layer. Zoom in. So you see that uh, this has a separate extension here and here. So let's go over that one more time. So working with the sample drawing, I'll go ahead and insert the block again. And once an insertion point is picked in the drawing, the edit attribute dialog appears. The value of each attribute contained in the block is displayed in this dialog box, as I showed you. The display is limited to the first eight attributes contained in the block. So this one currently has five, but you can go up to eight. You can see down here, there are these blank values. They're grayed out. Uh, you can edit the attribute values. You cannot edit the attribute values on locked layers. So if this was locked, let's do that real quick. And go into Layer Manager. Let's try and move this guy up here. So you see that the phone layer is unlocked. Let's go ahead and lock it. Let's delete him. Go back. Go into Properties. So if we go into at edit and we try to select one of these phones to see that we can't because the layer is locked. Also, if we go into properties, we shouldn't be able to uh, edit this. There we go, one or more selected objects is on a locked layer, it cannot be updated. So let's go back and unlock this. Go ahead and get rid of these extra instances here. All right, so multiple line attributes display the in-place text editor with the text formatting toolbar and the ruler. So depending on the settings of at type, system variable, uh, the text formatting toolbar displayed is either abbreviated version or the full version. Uh, if this dialog is not displayed when insane, inserting an attribute defined block, uh, then that may indicate that the uh, at DIA system variable has been set to zero. A second reason may be the at rec system variable has also been set to zero. So let's go ahead and try those real quick. So I'm going to type in at type, set that to zero, at DIA, set that to zero, and at rec, set that to zero. So if we do insert again, and we pick the phone block, and we pick a point, then that dialog is not going to come up.
So let's go back and reset those. Okay, and so the properties palette. Let's go back here. So as I mentioned before, like any object in AutoCAD drawing block, oh, it disappeared on me. Expand that out. Uh, attribute properties can be viewed and modified using the properties palette. If necessary, you can use Control-1. to have that show. And again, the attribute values are down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and create some attributes. So we have this phone block here again. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, do the B edit command. So let's go over the B edit command here. So the block error can be used to define new blocks or redefine existing blocks. It's also an effective tool for adding or modifying uh, attribute definitions. So let's go ahead and type that in. So here's the edit block definition dialog and we are going to select the phone block again. And here we are. So the block editor allows for easy reordering of attributes as well. So this can be done with the bat order command, uh, which is only available within this block editor. So if you want to reorder how uh, these attributes here are shown, type in the bat order command here. And let's say we want to move a few things around. I'll do this again when we add in a new attribute, but let's say we wanted uh, the employee attribute to move up. So when we show that attribute, it should display the employee on the top. And moving on here, I'm going to uh, define a few attributes for you. Well, I'll just do one here. I'll do the at def command. So attribute definition comes up with the attribute definition uh, box here, and I'll go ahead and add an attribute. Let's go over some of these uh, options here before we uh, finish up with that. So on the side here we have mode, and we have a couple of options here in mode. So we have invisible, and so that specifies uh, that uh, attribute values are not displayed or printed when you insert the block. Uh, the at display command overrides the invisible mode. I'll show you that at uh, the end here after I've inserted a new um, attribute definition. We go back into the model. Uh, constant down here assigns attributes a fixed value for the attribute when you insert the block. Uh, the setting is used for information that never changes. And then we have verify and that prompts you to verify that the attribute value is correct when you insert the block. And preset sets the attribute to its default value uh, without displaying a prompt when you insert the block. The preset option applies only uh, when uh, prompts for attribute values are set to be displayed at the command prompt uh, at DIA uh, when it's set to zero. And then we have lock position, which I have this enabled here, and that uh, locks the location of the attribute within the block reference. When unlocked, the attribute can be moved relative to the rest of the block uh, using grip editing, and multi-line attributes can be resized. Then we have multiple lines, and that specifies that the attribute value can contain multiple lines of text, and lets you specify a boundary width for the attribute. Moving on over here, we have the attribute section. Uh, this sets the attribute data. So we have the tag that specifies the name uh, with which to identify the attribute. So enter the attribute tag using any combination of characters except for spaces. Uh, lowercase letters are automatically changed to uppercase. So let's uh, create a attribute here. Let's say manufacturer. 
Then we move on to prompt, and this specifies the prompt that will be displayed when you insert a block containing this attribute definition. If you do not enter a prompt, the attribute tag is used as a prompt. If you select constant in the mode area, the prompt option is not available. Let's go ahead and also say manufacturer. And then we have default. This specifies the default attribute value. Let's say it's created by Acme Phones. And then next to default, we have the insert field button over here uh, that displays a field dialog box in which you can insert a field as all or part of the value for an attribute. Uh, I won't be needing that here, but we can click on that. We have uh, various default field names. You can select by category, uh, author, format, or you can create a field expression down below. You can solve that. And then over here on the lower left hand of the dialog, we have insertion point. So this specifies the location for the attribute. Uh, you can enter it coordinate values or select uh, specify on screen and use your pointing device uh, as your mouse uh, to specify the location of the attribute relative to the other objects that you have on the block. So you have specify on screen, which I have checked. Uh, so that displays a start point prompt when the dialog box is closed and it uses uh, you use your mouse to specify the location of the attribute relative to the other attributes uh, by hand. And then you have your XYZ coordinates. And then on this side you have your text settings. So this sets the justification, style, height, rotation of the attribute text through here. You can specify if it's uh, antiv or not, specify text height, rotation. Uh, you can also align below previous attribute definitions here, but it is currently grayed out. I'm going to be doing this manually. So let's go ahead and give that a shot here. So just to note, attribute data can be added as you define a block or while redefining an existing block definition. Uh, there are several ways to update an existing block. Um, and I'm using the method through the block editor here. So here is my attribute. I'm going to go ahead and place this. That looks good. Also, we have a couple of other things to go over here. We have uh, bat order, as I believe I showed you before. Let's open this up. No, I don't think we've gotten there yet. Here we go. Okay. So you can see manufacturer is now displayed. And let's say I want him moved up above cost. And let's move employee back down. So this will show up outside the block editor. Let's go ahead and save. So after we're done editing the block, you're going to want to make sure that if you want um, those attributes to apply to the other blocks, uh, the new attribute I add, manufacturer, you're going to need to use the at sync command. So attribute sync, that is A-T-T-S-Y-N-C. And let's go by name. That was phone gen. Oh, and it looks like I forgot to set manufacturer to invisible. So that's being shown here. Let's go over here. This is a better one. It's not upside down. So here uh, we have two attributes that are not invisible. So you can always see those. So it is the manufacturer and the extension. So if we go in here. You can see that listed here under manufacturer. You can always change that value, as I said before. 
And so if we wanted to see all of the attributes, as I mentioned, there is the uh, attribute display command. A-T-T-D-I-S-P. Here we go. And so let's go over these real quick. A couple of options here. Normal displays how it's set uh, when you've created the attribute, so in the definition. So if it was uh, invisible, it will remain invisible. If uh, it's not invisible, it will be shown as here. Uh, if we set to on, then all attributes will be shown. So let's go ahead and set on. So here we are here. All the attributes are shown. And as you may have deduced, if we hit off, then all attributes will now be invisible. So manufacturer and uh, extension are gone. So let's go ahead and change this back. Here we are again. Okay, and let's go over a couple of best practices uh, when you're working with attributes here. So you want to note that it's always best to work with uh, a company CAD standard if you have one in place. Otherwise, some common guidelines that may uh, be considered are uh, define the block container on layer zero. However, I've created a, uh, a separate uh, layer for this. Uh, create the attribute on a new unique text layer. An alternative is to add a color property to the attribute text uh, in order to define the line weight uh, or define a unique, unique text style uh, for the attribute. And uh, the block with the attribute will most likely be inserted into numerous drawings, so a unique text style will ensure that the text is displayed uh, as you have designed it. So we can always go back and change. which is at def. And here, I've shown you before, you can always open up uh, the block and redefine the attribute or add a new attribute. There's another command here for that. Let's go out of block header for this. Attribute redefine. Let's type in the phone block name. Let's see phone. Oh, that hasn't happened before. That's not coming up. Okay. Let's move on here. So let's try the at edit command. and select the block reference again. And so we went over this previously here. Again, you can change the uh, attribute names, the values. And then we have uh, the attribute uh, block manager command here. I believe we need to get into the block area for this. So this is the Batman command. So this has a few options that you'll see in um, attribute sync and bat order. Uh, see if you don't have the correct block, you can select it. Uh, from the drawing area. Currently we're on phone. There's only two blocks in this drawing. 
that we're going to be working with here. So here we have sync. So any changes you make here, you can sync it up with the other uh, instances of the block. You can go ahead and uh, move, like in bat or you can move the attributes uh, up and down on the list. You can remove them. Uh, you can edit them. So we have extension, extension number, default value. You uh, can change that to invisible if you'd like. So let's see if we can't uh, make extension not show up in the model here. You have your text options and properties. So this is a lot like uh, the at def command here. So let's go ahead and make it invisible. And I'll go back to uh, the bat manager in just a second. Let's see if this updated. It appears to have updated. Uh, let's make sure it's uh, across the board here. Okay, so it looks like that was just the one block. So let's make sure that our changes go everywhere. So it should be synced up now. Let's see. And so, as I said, the sync command button uh, updates the block. And we have some settings here. So this dictates what uh, attribute settings will be displayed in the block attribute manager. So if we want to add, let's say, style, this should show up here in the block manager. Let's see, there it is. So moved over a bit. And so we made extension invisible and we synced that up. Let's go ahead and uh, close out of this. And we can close the block editor. And if this had worked, let's see. Uh, again, it doesn't appear that it's synced up with all of them. But that's OK. We're going to go ahead and show you some data extraction here. So this is if you wanted to save out your attribute data into a DXE file. So there is a command for that here. I'm going to go ahead and type that in. It is eat text. E-A-T-T-E-X-T. Let's go ahead and enter. There we go. So the eat text command can be typed at the CLI or found on the ribbon uh, under uh, the insert tab, linking and extraction panel, data extraction. So let's go ahead and verify that. So insert tab, it's right there, under linking and extraction panel. Here, data extraction. There we go. So just to note for everyone, this command is not available in AutoCAD LT. Uh, AutoCAD Lite does have the ability to extract attribute data, but due to time constraints, uh, that is out of the scope for this presentation. So I'm not going to open up AutoCAD LT. We're just going to be working uh, in vanilla. Uh, so the data extraction wizard easily extracts uh, drawing data to an AutoCAD table object or external file, as I mentioned, such as a spreadsheet. This is not limited to block attribute data. Uh, this is not an in-depth tutorial about the eText command. Rather, this is going to be just a quick, glossy overview. I'm going to walk through the process here. Uh, for more information, uh, that can be found in the AutoCAD help. Uh, 
um, our previous web webinar recording and a possible future webinar revisiting the table command. So we had uh, one a while back that went over this as well. Um, so I invoked uh, the etext command and under here we have, um, let's see, dialog here. So create a new data extraction. I'm going to create a new one. It's going to prompt me to save the data extraction. Um, so let's go ahead and open up desktop and I have my webinars folder here and let's call it attributes and it's going to save as a DXC as I mentioned before. That's the extension here. It's the only one that you can choose from. So we'll hit save. So this is the defined data source page on so we have here uh, data source, drawing sheet, or uh, sheet set. So we have drawing or sheet set. Uh, we have a checkbox here to include current drawing, which I have checkmarked because it's the only drawing that I have open here. And select objects in the current drawing. Now we're just going to do everything cart launch here. We're going to open up settings. Let's just make sure everything here is correct. We have extraction settings. Uh, extract objects from blocks, extract them uh, from XREFs. So I have both those checked and then include XREFs in block counts. Don't have any XREFs, so I won't include them. Then we have extract from objects in model space or all objects in the drawing as you uh, could have seen before. Uh, that option is already available under data source. So all drawings and uh, all objects in the drawing. Let's go to objects in mall space. Go ahead and hit next. So these are the objects to display. Um, so when I create a table here, it's going to display all these. I don't want all of them. So I'm going to deselect most of these. Let's just have the ones uh, shown that I have for attributes in, in here. Phone gen. There. So we're just going to do the attributes for phone gen, the phone block. And we can narrow down the search too. Under display options, we have display all object types, display blocks with attributes only, and display objects currently in use only. So, it should just be phones. And here we have the properties. So, we're just going to uncheck everything uh, but the attributes that I've added to the phone. So we don't need all this extra information. And that looks like it covers it. So let's go ahead and hit next. Okay, let's check out uh, the refined data here. So these are all the instances of the block in the drawing. So as I mentioned before, there's a conference room with a couple of phones and I've added one and then there was three uh, phones uh, in the three offices as well. So let's go ahead and hit next. And we have some output options here. Uh, we can select output types for this extraction. We can either insert the data extraction uh, into a table into the drawing or we can output that data 
to uh, an external file. So let's go ahead and just uh, create a table. And we can choose the table style. So this is the attribute style. We can uh, manually set up the table. Let's call it attributes. All right, hit next and hit finished. And so this may come up a little small here, but uh, let's see. There we go. It's a little small, but it's not too small. Okay. So as you can see, I've created a table and it has uh, all of the attribute data from all the instances of the phone block here. So you have all the costs, the department, uh, employee title, employee extension, and manufacturer, and all lines up with what we have here. So that concludes uh, my presentation on attributes. I hope you've all uh, learned something new uh, during this presentation. We're going to move on to a uh, question and answer uh, portion of the uh, webinar here. So we'll go ahead and move this over to uh, back to Dave. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and change the presenter. Okay, there you go. Let's see what kind of questions we have. All right, so before we actually we get to the questions, let me just move this out of the way. Um, All right. Just got a couple other things real quick to, to go through. Um, so there's uh, some additional uh, links here that we put in the PowerPoint like we usually do with uh, uh, just getting to the knowledge, uh, Autodesk Knowledge Network, uh, some links to the help files, you know, commands for attributes and such like that. So, uh, you know, if you want more information, uh, please uh, pick on some of these links. Uh, Upcoming web, uh, webinars, uh, you see that we, we are actually are taking a, a little bit of a break here from our pace of uh, each week. So the next webinar will be on October 8th, and uh, one of our favorite things, we'll be talking about different productivity tips and tricks, and at that uh, point, we'll talk about uh, what the plans are going forward if we get back to uh, a weekly basis or a little bit more spread out. But uh, hopefully, uh, you know, this is going to continue for the foreseeable future. Uh, if you want some more information about the webinars, uh, you know, you can always come to the landing page here. If you have additional questions that uh, we don't get to answer uh, during the, the webinar, uh, you can post your questions by picking on the link that's shown. And, you know, we also love to get feedback. So, uh, you know, if you want to send feedback on the webinars, uh, please send it to the uh, autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com and make sure that you put in build your AutoCAD IQ as in the subject line so that uh, the the emails will get to this team and not to the Revit team or one of the other teams that are doing these webinars. So that's important. Um, and before we do the q and I just want to do one last poll real quick. If I can get my mouse to show up. And let's see. So, like we usually do, we just want to know if uh, if you've learned something new today. Uh, I know that uh, attributes can, you know, been around for a long time, but uh, hopefully Scott was able to cover some things that you may not have known about, and it looks like uh, the vast majority did learn something new, which is fantastic. Just wait just a little bit as people are still voting. Okay. Well, it looks like it's uh, slowed down, so I'll go ahead and close the poll at this point and share that. So it looks like uh, about 91% have learned something new, so that's fantastic. And uh, let's see if uh, we had any questions that we can ask real quick. Uh, so, uh, Scott, there was a question here. Does bat order update existing blocks as well as future insertions? Uh, bat order, um, I believe, should update uh, future insertions. So, uh, so if you have uh, new attributes, I, I believe is the question. So, if you're adding new attributes, uh, it's going to push the new one um, down to the bottom, 
but uh, how you ordered the previous attributes, it's going to retain that. So you'll want to open up that order again and then uh, move that new attribute up or down on the attribute list, um, you know, if it gets thrown to the bottom. Right. And uh, this is a kind of a maybe a little bit more than we can discuss here, but just someone wants to know if they can link an attribute data with an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I don't know if you... Uh, yes. Uh, so when you export the data extraction, uh, I believe it had the XLS uh, format there. Yep. So if you saw that extension uh, during the data extraction, uh, extraction portion of the presentation. Okay. Let's see... Uh, and now, if you had any that you saw, I'm just kind of looking through the questions here. Uh, uh, somebody's asking when you were um, unchecking all the various options in the data extraction, if you could select a whole bunch and uncheck it all at once. And I know one of the options is on the if if people remember seeing there was a a list of like five or six items on the right hand side of the dialog and you can actually toggle off whole sections by using those so that can mm -hmm. help uh, um, with the, the selection and deselection process but I, I think that you could also just do a shift or something and select a whole bunch of things as well so have you tried that Scott? Have I tried uh, doing shift and then uh, deselecting or selecting a, a bunch of those variables at the same time? No, I've, yeah. I've just done it uh, one at a time. Um, but uh, usually I, I don't have too many uh, values in here. But in this particular presentation, uh, we had many values, not just the ones you noted that were yeah. attributes, but we had author and file size and so on. Yeah. And somebody's asking how to update tables after you create one. and there's uh, basically an update data uh, data link option, right? Uh, uh, yes, I believe so, yeah. So wait a minute, can I do it? Hmm. Um, so there's a question here, is a way to make attribute preset values so that the <laughs> user can only enter things that are you know, pre predefined. So blue, red, green only. And you can't type purple. Um, that I'm not sure about. I don't think so. But uh, on the previous question, yeah, if you uh, take the table and you right click it, uh, you should have the option down below to update table data links. Hey, Scott, can you please uh, show your screen? Yeah. Uh, right now we're still on the polls. Still on the oh. polls. Let's go back here. All right, everyone. Okay, can everyone see my screen? I hope everyone can see my screen. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go. Let's go back. A question here uh, about updating uh, this information. So, we have this selected. We right click. Let's see, offline here. There we go. So uh, down below here, uh, underneath table indicator color, we have update table data links, and then write data links to a uh, external source. So you can update the the table here. Scott, I have another question. Uh, can you go over the APT redef command again one more time? Don Brown's asking about to, it. Okay, to uh, redefine um, an attribute. Yeah. Okay. One second. Let's see here. Oh, sorry about that. That hasn't happened before. Let's just try opening it up in the uh, block editor. Nope. Let's try a different one. Okay, 
said worked uh, the first time I did it here. Sorry about that. Here, let's try a different one. My apologies, it doesn't seem to have uh, worked again as before. It looks like uh, AutoCAD crashed out. But this is a great opportunity to discuss sending in error reports to, to AutoCAD. So, exactly. <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and fill this everything. information. So uh, using the at redef command. Hey, Dave. Yes. Um, about uh, sending error reports, um, I had uh, submitted a case to um, the tech oh. support with Autodesk and through my subscription and benefit, then. and they looked at my emails and said, oh, yeah, you have submitted uh, all these uh, support requests on this problem, and uh, we're seeing a trend now, So, and they fixed it in the next. Uh, revision. Right. Yeah. These, these, these reports are. You know, a lot of people think that they're not you know looked at or not seen by anybody. But uh, if you're having crashes, uh, please send in the reports. Make sure you include your email so we can look it up. And uh, often we'll be able to determine you know what the cause of a crash is. And if not, it at least uh, gets populated into a bucket that uh, development uses for. Um, prioritizing fixes so it's mm. uh, it's really important to send these in and, uh, and it's also important if I may add Dave that uh, if you open up a support case with us uh, if you've experienced a crash uh, if you can reproduce a crash be sure to uh, send us an error report here uh, because we can go ahead and search for that error report and see if there's uh, any information included in the report that could be helpful in troubleshooting your case. So that's also important. So uh, what, are there any other questions? We can ask maybe ask, answer one more question if there was another one, Nalan? Yeah, I'm not seeing. Um, they're asking if you would use the extended attribute extraction command uh, for a bill of materials. I would, I mean, that's how I probably, or ATTEXT is another one that if you want to send out an Excel file, which is available in uh, LT. So if you mentioned that LT is not out of scope, but ATTEXT is the command if you want to use it in LT. Right. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Well, that's great. And uh, with that, I'd just like to really thank everybody for the time that you've taken to uh, join us today. And hopefully we'll see you all back at a, uh, a future session. And hope everybody has a great rest of your day and a great week. Thank you very much.